G'day everyone and welcome to Inside Rugby. If you haven't been here before, my name is Mark. I'm a Kiwi rugby fan who's living here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. Now, some pretty good games over the weekend in the URC competition, but I wanted to focus on a conversation around these whole team selections and what's going on because when I tuned in to watch the Leinster game against the Lions in Joburg, I was a little bit disappointed to see that there was 13 changes in the Leinster team that had travelled to Joburg to play against the Lions. Now this is something that we've already seen of course in the competition. A lot of people online over the last couple of weeks have been giving the Bulls a hard time for not sending their best team from... Okay, so Leo Cullen and Jacques Ninaba decided to send the Leinster B team to Johannesburg over the weekend. And I'm very interested to know what your thoughts are about this because I've seen lots of people complaining previously about when the Bulls sent their previous uh, B team to play the game in the UK. So let's get into it, have a conversation about it, get everybody's views and let's see if we can work out what's going on and what needs to be maybe fixed for the URC competition for next year. So in the case of Leinster, it's a little bit different, of course, because they're leading the URC competition and they're also through to the semi-finals of the Champions Cup. So one could say they could afford to lose a game as they did against the Lions in the weekend. But is this something that we want to promote for rugby? Is this something that us fans want to see? Or when we buy a ticket to go and watch the Lions playing Leinster in Johannesburg, which let's face it, doesn't happen on a lot of occasions. We expect to see the best Leinster team turning out and playing with all their stars in the team. So that's something else that needs to be considered in this conversation. And so I'm really interested to know what your thoughts are on this one. Do you think the team should be enforced to putting out their best teams wherever possible? Can that actually be regulated? I don't think so, of course. But uh, what is our expectations as fans of rugby? Do we want to see the best teams there playing week in, week out? Now, if you look at the English Premiership as a comparison over the years, although it's a different game, of course, you can see that uh, the increase in number of games that players play has increased, of course, in the number of injuries. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to work that one out. And uh, we can probably expect to see the same thing in the game of rugby. The more games that these players are asked to play, the higher chance of injury and the biggest impact that's going to have on the team's overall performance. And of course, their revenue generating opportunities by winning these competitions. So it's a tough one to get right. And rugby needs to learn, I think, from other competitions around the world. You've got the NBA as well, playing lots of games during the week and uh, having to field their best players all the time to actually try and get wins in the game. When you've got huge amounts of travel involved as well, it throws in another dynamic. So I think we need to be very, very careful. My personal opinion on this one, you can't blame the coaches for taking this approach. They've got to look after the players. They've got to try and do the best for the competitions that they're in. But as we've seen this past weekend, it didn't work out for the Bulls by uh, getting beaten in their latest game. Now, of course, we see the strategy being used and even in Rugby World Cups as well, where good uh, or the best players in the team are sometimes rested during different games. And we have the same scenario there. Fans of rugby have paid their price for their tickets to go along and maybe watch the All Blacks play for the first time or the Springboks play for the first time in their lives. And maybe their only time they get to watch these teams play and yet they don't see the best players in the team being rolled out. So it's a bit of a conundrum within the world of rugby. It's not unique, of course, to the URC competition. And uh, it's something that we need to be mindful of, whether or not it's something that we're going to be able to uh, completely rule out. I don't think there's a chance in Bilio of that happening as we move forward. So the teams know what uh, competitions they want to focus on for the year. Obviously, Leinster want to try and do the double this year with the Champions Cup and the URC. And they're building their season around it accordingly. Now, the other thing that change has changed these days is the scientific input to the players' well-being. And of course, there's so many different metrics that are used during training 
that uh, the coaching staff will know very well whether a player is on the edge of maybe getting an injury or has actually got a minor injury that they need to look after. The other thing that we have to consider is all the travel that's involved and uh, long distance, long haul travel. You know yourself if you've done any of that, it takes a big toll on the body. So it is difficult for players to fly from the UK or Europe down to South Africa and vice versa and to be at their 100% best in these competitions. So is the expectation real? I don't know whether it is at all, but I think the administrators need to look at this. I don't think teams need or should be penalized at this stage. I think it's in terms of the scheduling of these competitions and where teams actually find themselves in these competitions as the year goes on. Now, the other thing that's got to be taken into consideration, I think, in this whole conversation is that these players that are on the fringe of selection for the first team in each of these clubs have to be given an opportunity. If they don't get an opportunity to play in these games, then how are they going to get the experience? So one could say, well, there's nothing wrong in sending a B team down to South Africa for Leinster and seeing how these players step up. It gives the coaching staff Jacques Ninaba and Leo Cullen an opportunity to look at how these players perform against a team like the Lions and then come back and make some kind of debriefing on that whether these young players have got an opportunity to step up and play for that first team in the not too distant future. It also gives them an opportunity looking at maybe some of the bench opportunities for some of these big games coming up. So there's a, probably a win-win situation in there somewhere. The young players get an opportunity to be rolled out in these games and uh, just see what the level of competition is. It didn't so I'm very interested to know where you sit on this conversation. Are you someone that's dead against these B teams being rolled out in these important competition games? Or are you somebody that says, no, these B team players need to get their opportunity to play in this competition, to otherwise they're not gonna get the experience they need to move forward with their rugby careers. Let me know in the comments what you think on this topic. So there we go, that's a topic I wanted to bring up here on this Monday morning in beautiful Mexico. I wanted to hear what you thought about these selection issues that we're having within the URC at the moment and uh, what side of the fence you sit on. Okay, I'm going to be back again very soon with some more rugby content right here on Inside Rugby with Mark. If you like my videos, don't forget to give them a bit of a thumbs up, share it with your rugby mates, and hit that subscribe button if you're not one of my many subscribers already. I'll see you again really soon in the next video. Until then, stay safe, stay well, everyone, and uh, time to say adios from beautiful Mexico. Bye for now.